ability and uh, for fourth time this this day I will introduce myself so no forget it we go, we move forward so my my topic is um, active contributing or it is our intention actively contributing technologies in the field of durability this picture is quite illustrative is uh, depending on the day I said it is onshore structure or offshore structure depending on the day so it's quite convenient you never know so the point is why we need this stuff okay uh, during the next four hours we're gonna we're gonna talk about the hydration of cement huh? so be ready the point is that um, it doesn't matter how we design the materials or how we consider that our materials gonna behave there are many 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 uh, things that are defined because of the kinetics in a few seconds okay this seems to be a topic that we use we don't use to bear in mind when we design durability so why I try to introduce that um, part of, of the durability of the system is gonna be fixed in very few minutes from the very beginning during mixing because it's extremely critical the behavior in these early stages this is basically what's happening during the hydration of OPC we go one by one okay just to be sure that everybody understood well no no <laughs> was a joke the intention is to summarize this uh, briefly and make it understandable that is quite challenging okay but mainly what I want you is to bear in mind three main processes one of them is the dissolution second one is nucleation and the growth these three phenomenon by definition in different stages and with different mineralogical phases involved in them are the crucial topics that we need to address to understand the durability of the system or the given durability of the system okay just to put a bit more in a in a time frame schedule this is what's happening basically we have uh, in very very short term the dissolution nucleation and growth of uh, material that is called ethering guide this is quite important from a mixed uh, manufacturer point of view is where our chemistry uh, provoked the cleavage okay it's quite important later on all the processes more related with the hardening process setting and hardening process are coming but again dissolution nucleation and growth always the same approach and the point is how the system evolves from this initial composition an hydrous matrix to hydrated uh, resource or sorry product present in the OPZ and other kind of uh, supplementary cementitious material present in the system as I said before from my understanding and when I say my understanding for sure is, is my humble opinion I don't know if depending on your background if you agree or not is, is something that we design these events exactly to discuss about this but nucleation of growth seems to be quite crucial in the durability of the system so I would like to introduce one material that has been already introduced by Alexander that is it fits quite well in combination with this carbon nanotubes for example he was commenting that nanoparticles nanosilica in this case but nanoparticles generally speaking uh, is well known the contribution so here you can see I don't know you can that it, it affects dramatically the microstructure of the material so it means that it, it has a clear influence in the in the pore side distribution but also the nature of the CSH that we generate and so on this this could be summarized something like that it doesn't affect in short term a bit I'm talking about nano, nano silica it doesn't affect the the dissolution nucleation or growth of ethering guide from the very beginning not so significantly but quite crucial is the outer CSH able to generate so it's, it's a kind of seeding effect where you can uh, have more nucleation points to promote any kind of hydration in the system so that leads to a clear better early performances and when I say performance I would like to to relate to mechanical contributions 
and also a reduction of the porosity and uh, the capillary network of the system, generally speaking. Other point that I would like to remark is the supplementary cementitious materials. We need to move forward in, in, the, in the reduction of the CO2 footprint of our mixed designs. And we, sorry, because the information is in Spanish because the source is, of course, in Spanish, but I, I will translate easily. We have different options when we talk about the traditional supplementary cementitious material, but something that is not really well introduced where we don't have many references or best demonstrative practice out of methicaline. We have many, many references and extremely well-performing material based on slag-based materials or fly ashes-based materials with different kind of contents, combination of them, really well-formulated and designed. But the point is that we realize also that we have some potential candidates to go further in terms of uh, uh, durability contributions. One of them is methicillin. Nos nothing new to discover. I'm fully convinced that part of the, of the audience nowadays is a material that is quite uh, well known for them, but anyway, it's interesting to very mindful concrete industrial business. Here, as I said before, very good background with type 3, 4, and 5 cement types, mixed design formulations. But again, what we achieve by using this methicillin is a extremely good contribution in terms of refine of the poor system or poor size distribution and also very good early performance just there is a main drawback of slacks for example that is not able to contribute in short term easily for fly ashes it's not an issue they are able to contribute but for slack that is the the best practice i would say eh? in my humble opinion is not contributing so well at early ages and later on i will come back in this kind of drawback later on. So we were considering, and when I say we is, I couldn't finish my PhD, it's taken a while, more than six years now, <laughs> but the problem is with the daily business is complicated, so it, this is part of my PhD, so hopefully it will finish, I don't know when, but it will finish. But the point is that the combination of both, this could be a suitable approach to introduce in the portfolio of technologies that we can use to design but design, when I say design, we're not talking about mechanical strength, we're not talking about slump life, we're talking about durability on purpose, on demand. Would it be a good technology platform to go further in the definition of durability profile? Would it be? Let's see. What do we need to know? Okay, we made a systematic screening of different state of the art and so on. We are using really quick technologies, non-invasive, like resistivity methods, quite convenient to track, to monitor the evolution of the figures. And we saw that this is the reference. It doesn't mean that it's a bad reference. It's a reference. Yeah? We, were, we have all the mixed design and so on. You can agree or not in how we design them, or maybe you were proposing other stuff. But anyway, it is all proposal, OK? This is what we call a state of the art. We can significantly improve from resistivity point of view. It doesn't mean that it's durable solution is a, is a technique or uh, a tool that we use for make up this wider screening. And later on, we have been playing with all the kind of materials, what we call feasibilities. And here, just to summarize, I don't want to get in detail because it's not the focus and, and the intention is to only to give you a hint what we try to implement. Here, what we see is that by combining methicillin, there are many kind of but few of them are extremely good in, in, in this refination of the poor structures and, all early and also early contribution, mechanical point of view, physical point of view. And in the other side, we have also nanosilica. There are many cases you have uh, waterborne solutions or suspension, I would say, or even dry powders, uh, less functionalized, more fun most reactive, less reactive, different grind size distribution. So the point is that we made a significant screening of the state of the art, and we noticed that we can move forward from the standard 20 days figures to something really interesting. We're talking about uh, early durable performance. This is something that if you look at the evolution of the mixed designs, we have been able to design the slum flow on demand. It is not a limitation nowadays. You design your flow, 
and it's lasting the time that you design. So you can design slam flow on demand. Setting, I would say yes, you have short grid applications that is only a few seconds, or you have really long lasting, stabilized designs, cementitious designs that you can have open life for a few days if you want. Yeah? So setting on demand, you can address this on demand. Early strength or performance wise, also on demand, you can design really mechanical contribution, compressive, flexible, on demand. But the point is, are we able to get into the matrix through durability as a main uh, driver of design? This is orange or challenge, okay? And we are using techniques that we have for make sure the screen. And in this case, we use resistivity, and I will come back to here, exactly to this point, to, to reinforce one clear statement from our side. We need to develop or we need to improve and enhance techniques and methods to make more reliable all the durability uh, figures, data, results. It is important for designers, but also for properties to make really trustful the, the approach. Well, we made some porosity evolution, and here what I want you is only to bear in mind this. The, the type three is typical slack base, less than, I guess I'm talking about my memory, 40%, I guess? I, I think so, right? A type is less than 40, right? Someone knows? Well, you, you believe me. So the point is, here in really short term, okay? In really short term, it's quite road, so the porosity is still quite macro. And the evolution, not in short, not in seven, but in 28, you need a system more narrowing process. So we are really reducing the, the pore size, but not reducing systematically the volume behind, okay? With all the approaches, I use a methical in, or me specific kind one, or other kind of different nanosilicas, different ones, higher specific surface or lower specific surface. From the very beginning, this is the main challenge, right? The main change, sorry. Is, is narrow from the beginning. So we are really refining the pore from the very beginning. So from our point of view, this could be a suitable candidate or something that he deserves to go further in terms of how can we refine the poor structure from the very beginning or sort of on demand, okay? In all of them, you see the evolution, peaks a bit, a bit higher, a bit coarser four days, here a bit, a bit uh, finer, and later on a, a reduction in 20 days, okay? And systematically is exactly the same here. You see four days higher, seven days reduction, and in, from seven to 28, uh, uh, how do you say, Renar narrowing the, the gap or the, the size distribution. Okay, so we felt confidence that this approach also contributes in this physical uh, refination of the poor. Is that a Spanglish? I think so, right? So, okay. And the, we, we were further, we went a bit further and we were characterizing the total free and the ability of the system to combine the chloride in the system, okay? We use the, the reference, uh, and again, I said the reference is a very good reference, yeah? is the state of the art. I'm not talking about nothing wrong about the, the reference. The reference is behaving and performing very well, but it's not contributing in really short term as we need in some cases. Later on, we see where it can contribute. The point is that here with methicillin, I don't want to go in detail, yeah? but anyway, the information is gonna be there. If, if you don't get asleep, you can go back, and for sure you will go asleep. The point is that uh, the, the binding ability of those systems, because this highly amount of uh, reactive aluminate given by methicolin, this specific kind, whatever is the final content of the total chloride content, the binding ability of the system is much higher. So that means that even in case that the, the profile of the ingress of chlorides is higher, our system will be able to fix significant amount of this chloride. Chemically, I'm talking about really fixing. So it's quite interesting to bear in mind, just in case we need to put in service at some ages, that is not the one that we were expecting, okay? It's interesting to bear in mind. It's a kind of uh, on demand, uh, as a reservoir to fix some chloride, not expected to be increased. Well, we made some calculations just to be sure that 
what's the kind of rate that we can go further. And here you see, for example, the main contribution with the standards is that this combining ability of the system, we can increase systematically in all cases, okay? Some of them a bit faster, some of them a bit slower, but the point is that we can demonstrate that we have technology platforms to go further in terms of early contributing durable performance. Here, just to summarize, quite, quite uh, good numbers in some cases, but more than the figure itself is the evolution of the figure. It is a natural evolution in some cases. Here you see that we are achieving very good uh, diffusion coefficient in a really, really short term. When I say really short term, we're talking about from 28 to a few days, more or less, less than one week in some cases. And to be honest, I don't know if we can go further. Maybe we can talk about 24 hours, 38 hours, two days, depending of, of the intensity of the effect. So again, the evolution at early ages of the diffusion coefficient was quite nice, quite interesting, quite promising. And then I said before, we want to be sure that if all the methodologies that we are proposing and using and so on are reliable. And one of the topics was to demonstrate that whatever is the age that we are testing, resistivity and the coefficient diffusion, would it be a good approach from the very beginning to go further instead of every single chloride profile that we can, we can really go further and design a kind of abacus where we can use really short-term testing, non-invasive, cheap ones, easy to implement, and construct, con, con, construct them, check them, okay. check them by using the, the real one, coefficient, diffusion, all those that are really uh, prescribed by authorities or entities that want to have more reliable data. But from the very beginning, it looks a promising also technique or tool to, in, to enlarge our portfolio of testing. Yet again, we made some CSH uh, gel formation. And here, if you see, I, I, I didn't say nothing about compressive or fractura or whatever. I don't care, to be honest. All of them are really good performing, achieving the characteristic compressive strength that the project is requiring. It doesn't matter. It's not a topic here. The point is, how early are we obtaining a reliable and consistent CSHL in comparison with the state of the art. This is the basis of, of the, the, the project itself. And something really interesting, uh, because of me, in some cases, we have delay in testing, okay? And these delays uh, create some confusion in, in, the, in the data. We, we get into detail. This is more for scientific, but I want you to challenge a bit and see if this could be because of this or why. We notice some if you look at the, some regulations or testing method, they say by definition, remove the first uh, measure point. The first point you don't need to measure is out of, of the final treatment of the data. But we measure the first also. And we notice certain deviation, but the deviation here, okay, maybe we did something wrong or is because of some deviation of the system, but we went further. We characterized this first point and we saw something a bit different. What we saw is a clear carbonation formation there. Could it be a topic that maybe we are not very in mind? Now we are tracking systematically how chloride effect also could be affected by CO2 exposure in early ages. This is a point that was described for, I uh, can't remember now, is a Chinese colleague in the University of Suzhou that is, is really investing time on it because he noticed, or his what his main conclusion are at, uh, state, uh, stating that there is a combination of effects is like a reinjection of the chloride within the matrix. So this early exposure to carbonation in a few days is affecting systematically the profile of the chloride evolution. So interesting to bear in mind, only to bear in mind. What for? I try to be quite um, precise in the information that I bring here. But if you look at um, the evolution of, of uh, marine or ports, needs infrastructures point of view and so on, all these uh, structures are not sufficient to cover the demand that we're gonna face in, in a few years. So we are in a case of uh, Spain, but also globally speaking, 
the, the marine or maritime transport is, is becoming crucial for the global economy. It's nothing that you cannot, you cannot avoid. It's something that is, is the key. And the point is that if you look at it, the, the investment categories that infrastructure responsible are asking for, for basic infrastructure, the one third, more than one third of the budget is fully dedicated to preserve, to maintain what we have. But if we combine both, not only what we have, is what we're gonna need. This is something that we need to deliver much more reliable structures with less maintenance costs operating costs, if you want, running costs, or the financial guy is able to translate that. But we need to deliver something much easier and much more affordable to maintain in a long-term perspective. Sustainability is core, okay? But what about operating costs? If you look at here, how many people, different topics, delays. So this is really tough. It's really tough to work in this condition. You cannot say that, okay, and now we wait 20, 20, 28 days till the material is cured. You cannot. Or you cannot place this kind of concrete case on for a while there, pending in a crane, just waiting for a curing. It shouldn't work. It shouldn't. It's not operating. So quick in service, operating running costs, all these kind of mechanisms, or sorry, not mechanism, key points, is what we need to address if we want to get some success when we introduce these kind of technologies. So from my understanding, I think that um, we need to, to go further in terms of these technological platforms that are able to contribute in durability on demand. It is something that we as, as construction materials developers, we need to go further. Also, we need to understand the mechanism to make a cost efficient designs. It is, is something that if you don't go with a reliable and uh, but also quite affordable solution, it will never happen. It is something important to bear in mind from the very beginning. A third point is if we deliver better tools or designers design much better, so it means that it will have a significant impact in the quality of the finished goods, okay? And the last point is crucial, is the scaling up. We need to move forward from the lab to the real job site to demonstrate that our solution are affordable, reliable, and uh, from mechanical point of view or a performance point of view, solvent, okay? And that is all from my side.